So don't forget this, don't forget this. These cells can also be called effector cells. So this is in contrast to helper cells. These are also called effector cell. Why? Because these cells can actually take part in taking care of the pathogen or the cells infected by the pathogen. That is why these are called effector cells. We have talked in our previous immuno immunology lectures that those cells which actually go and actually actively work and fight and beat the pathogens and the viruses and bacteria or the cells which are sick or the tumor cells, these cells which are engaged actively to take care of them are called effector cells. For example, what could be the other example of an effector cell? Natural killer cell is an effector cell. T cytotoxic T cell is an effector cell. Macrophage is an effector cell. B cells which make antibodies are actually effector cells as well. They are, they are affecting in a different way, but these are also effector cells. So effector cells are those last cells which are doing the function to actually directly working with the immune uh, infection to eradicate it. Helpers do not directly attack the pathogens. Helper do not directly try to work with the pathogen. Rather they promote, they encourage other cells to say go fight, there is an infection, do something about it. I am here to help you. You want to go, I am going to train you, I am going to help you, I am going to give you chemical messages and I am going to promote the other cells to go and do their function. So we should really know what these th cells are and of course we have talked about natural killer cells before. These are T cells which went into the innate, they say we do not need help, we do not need any other things, we would just go and be the effector cells ourselves. Gamma delta cells still being discussed. So again if you see here, we have T helper. In that we have T helper 0, naive cells, we have T helper 1 or they trigger cytotoxic response, we will talk about it, T helper 2 antibody response, then regulatory cells which are adaptive and natural, T helper 7. Then we have cytotoxic T cells, then we have memory T cells, natural killer and gamma delta. So on the board here one type of T cell which I did not write is really the memory T cell. So what I will say is this way. T helper cells and cytotoxic T cells both can become memory T cells. So there are some helper cells which after recognizing an antigen after becoming active can go dormant, they can go to sleep for years and then in future if the same infection comes back again they would become active and start helping the immune system. Similarly, cytotoxic T cells, the effector C T cells, the soldiers which are going to go and fight, these can also become memory cells and they would also then wait for years for infection to reoccur and if that happens, these are going to become active and go and take care of it. So memory T cells, instead of writing another type of it over here, what I would say is that the memory T cells are really a specialization of helper and cytotoxic T cells. Good. So, so far we have done the classification of T cells, types of the T cells. Now I am going to start building up towards how do they function. So one very important thing which we should understand that how do the T helper cells help. We have to have a bigger picture of this situation. Once we understand that we will go in further details and we will talk about those helps. But the bigger picture has to be understood very well. Okay, so I have been making a diagram like this in the past that we have macrophages on this side, then we have the helper cells and then we have acquired immunity. Remember if you go to my previous uh, lectures, you will see that there are certain diagrams with the bigger picture. I want to now today talk about a very, very important thing and that is before we continue on, this one topic is of such importance that a doctor, a student, a practitioner of medical or health sciences must, must, must understand this, must understand this and that is, let us say here is a body tissue. This is skin in front of this tissue. So this is skin, right? This is skin, 
this is some tissue of course what would that mean I'm going to simplify this I'm going to say here is a basement membrane remember all tissues have some sort of a basement membrane or they have some sort of reticular network on which cells are plopped on which cells are present so let's say we have this interstitium or we have connective tissue on the connective tissue are sitting some cells right and you know that this whole thing the whole tissue is filled with cells but at the same time you are also aware that there is interstitium here there is connective tissue here and you know what is connective tissue made up of I hope you have done the histology if not go back and look at the connective tissue you have you know you have laminin you have fibronectin you have um, you have various type of cells sitting here which are uh, which are helping to either become part of the connective tissue or these are secreting chemical molecules and collagen and other things which are making the connective tissue. In this connective tissue of course we also have various kind of fluids so remember here is let us say there is a blood vessel here and we are we know that there are fluids which enter the tissue and then there are fluids which leave the tissue we are also aware I am going to draw with the green color I do not know how well it appears but let us say we are also aware that there are lymphatics right. So the lymphatics also exchange lymphatic fluid but most of the time the fluids drain into the lymphatics with the particles which are larger in size and cannot be exchanged via the capillary walls these larger particles for example dead tissue for example dead cells for example bacteria for example parasites those larger cells and debris that washes into the lymph channels from where these lymph channels take us to the lymph nodes right and who lives in the lymph nodes B cells live in the lymph node T cell live in the lymph node dendritic cells live in the lymph node follicular dendritic cells live, live in the lymph nodes macrophages limb, live in the lymph node so there are many many immune related cells which stay in the lymph node so this is a very important channel as we talk more about the T cells you will find out that this channel is very important so anyways let us say this is our structure here is a point very important point when a pathogen enters our tissue that pathogen so let us say this is a happy pathogen it has entered the tissue it is having a little dance party it is very happy it has come to the source of food this pathogen can decide now do not do not forget this for your whole career this pathogen can decide to stay out here in the tissue that means in the interstitium or it can decide to get into the cell so it can go into the cell or it can stay in the interstitium you know that viruses always end up in the cell why because they cannot actually replicate outside the cell they do not have DNAs they cannot process a lot of things on their own they need to hijack the cells machinery to do their function so that is why they always go in the cell so can I say now for simplicity there are going to be pathogens which would stay outside the cells and inside the cells good this one this one point is the basis of the whole immune system and then of course it is the basis of immunology and then of course it is the basis for pharma, pharmaceutical medicines which are related to infections and, and allergies and then of course it is related to your patients it is related to you this one simple concept will have repercussions everywhere so let us be very very clear about this pathogens which can live in the interstitium and the pathogens which can live in the cells why am I so much stressing about this thing here is the point which as a student as a doctor you should never forget so this point goes into that notebook where there are big big important things which are marked and boxed and golden stars are present around them this point is our body would handle eliminate fight extracellular pathogens